Chapter 5 Shri Sai Sacharita This is a rather long but an important chapter as it has many milestones in the life of Sai Baba So I shall first give a list of the leelas that are written in this chapter then I shall narrate them in detail The leelas are Chand Bai Patel to coming to Shirdi and getting the name Sai 3 saints staying in Shirdi 4 padukas under the neem tree 5 wrestling bout with mohuddin tamboli 6 jawar ali the sudo guru 7 turning water into oil Now I shall narrate the story of Chand Bai Patel and the possible meaning. Southwest of Aurangabad lies a small village called Dubkhera. Chand Patel lived there. He was the headsman or patel of the village. He had no children, but his wife had a nephew who was engaged to be married to a girl from Shirdi. The Leela of Chand Patel and his lost mare is given in chapter 5 of the Shri Sai Satcharita. Once while going to Aurangabad Chand lost his mare. For two long months he made a diligent search. Yet he could not find the mare. Dejected he finally gave up and putting the saddle on his back was returning home. Lal Khan Chand's grandson states that the mare was lost about 15 to 20 kilometers from Dubkhed near the twin villages of Sindon and Bindon. Forlorn at the loss, he trudged along with the saddle on his back. Then he saw a fakir sitting under a huge mango tree. The fakir was preparing to smoke his chilam. On seeing Chand pass by, he called him and inquired about the saddle on his back. Chand told him the story of the lost mare. The fakir asked him to look near the rivulet close by, and lo, he found his mare. Delighted, Chand returned to the fakir with the mare. The chilam was ready to be smoked. However, two things were needed: a coal to light the tobacco with. and water to wet the chappi the fakir thrust the prongs into the ground and out came a burning ember then he dashed a satka on the ground from where sprang a thin stream of water the fakir took a puff and offered the chilam to chand chand watched this leela unfold before his eyes with wonder He then requested the fakir to sanctify his home by visiting it. Baba accepted the invitation, went to his home and stayed there for a while. When the date of Chand's nephew's wedding approached, the whole family went to Shirdi. They requested Baba to come along, and Baba thus came to Shirdi. Upon the arrival at Shirdi, the marriage party alighted in Malsapati's field the fakir was welcomed by Malsapati who said aao sai and thus the fakir was christened sai or sai baba this is one of the 16 samskars the possible meaning of the leela here the village of doop kid represents a body that is we are dwelling in the heat of worldly pleasures indicated by the word doop we think we are precious and alluring as the moon or the chand we make rules for others but live as we please hence the name or title of patel or village headsman this chand patel who is the body meets the sadguru when he loses his mare the mare here represents the mind which is lost and is wandering about needlessly 
the owner of the mare carries the saddle that is our body carries the reins to control the lost mind the searching of the mare is our own body in search of self realization chand patel meets the sadguru after traveling four and a half course or 9 miles Nine here is symbolic of the nine orifices or dwars of the body. When we detach from the nine orifices, we reach the Sadguru. The Sadguru then helps us to realize the self, that is Atma Sakshatkar. The meaning of Atma Sakshatkar is that the Atma is the absolute self. but we are ignorant of its real nature agnana or ignorance of its real nature has led to bondage thus gyana or knowledge will lead the atma to liberation this is not a state to be attained but the original state itself regained in this state atma will enjoy unalloyed bliss The Sadguru is sitting under the mango tree that is the tree of salvation. He is preparing to smoke the chilam. The tobacco that he crushes represents our karmas. The burning of the tobacco is the burning of our karma by his divine grace. Each one of us carries a burden of karma and only he can lessen this burden. The satka that he uses represents the insulator which protects us from the shocks generated by the current of maya the sadguru offers the chilam that is he offers his grace and shows the direction where the mare is this means that he takes us on the path to attain self realization The mayor is merrily drinking water from the stream. This indicates that our mind lost in the stream of worldly pleasures. The Sadguru asks us to sit with him to learn from his teachings. Then he prepares the chilam means he is preparing to burn our karma and thus helping us to attain self-realization. He picks up the burning coal with a pair of tongs. Here the pair of tongs represent Shraddha and Saburi, with which he picks the burning desire to realize self. Shraddha is complete unconditional and unwavering faith and devotion in the Sadguru. Saburi comes from the Sufi terms sabr it means patience and endurance of all adversities patience together with an attitude of thanksgiving is the beginning of the devotee's full surrender to god and guru he brings forth a stream of water from the ground with the help of the satka that is the discriminating knowledge or insulator between the transient and the intransient materials that help to get bhakti he then soaks a piece of cloth in the water and ties it around the lower end of the chilam so that the heat from the burning tobacco will not harm us if we soak ourselves in bhakti then we will get protected from the burning heat of our karmas and we will be in the state of bliss this could be the possible meaning next i will narrate the charitra of the saints that visited shirdi in the mid 1800s ganga gir maharaj performs naam sapta in shirdi ganga gir maharaj was born in kapas vadgaon in 1814 He was devoted to Lord Shiva and Vithala and was of the Varkari Sampradaya. His ashram is in Sarla Bhet, Taluka Shri Rampur, about 39 kilometers from Shirdi. 
He went from village to village performing Nam Sapta for a week. After the Sapta, he performed a massive Anadan. Once, he visited Shirdi and performed Nam Sapta. On that visit, he saw Baba holding two pitchers of water in both his hands and watering the plants. Nearby, he saw Malsapati standing and talking to some villagers. Gangagir went to him and said, Who is this Maharaj? Malsapati informed him that he was Sahi Maharaj. Then, full of admiration, he said, He is a diamond. If you think he is an ordinary stone lying in rubble, you have not recognized his divinity. Just then, Baba went to the Dwarkamai and kept the pictures. Gangagir Maharaj followed him. Baba quickly kept the pictures there and picked up a small stone in his hand as if to throw it at him. But Gangagir Maharaj just stood there smiling. Go this way and come through the west, said Baba, pointing the way. Maharaj did what Baba had ordered. Then Baba welcomed him, saying, Come, Changdev Maharaj. Later, Malsapati, Gangagir Maharaj, and Baba sat together and smoked the chilim in the Dwarkamai. Annadan was performed in Shirdi during Baba's centennial celebration. It was done on Panchami of the Shravan Mass of 2018. The Annadan was simple but delicious. It consisted of amti and bakris. The bakris were collected from the neighboring villages and from every home in Shirdi. This was done so that the villagers could participate in the Anadan and enjoy it. This Anadan has been going on non stop for 171 years. This information was taken from Shiladhi, written by Keshav B. Gavankar. Anandnath Maharaj comes to Shirdi for darshan in 1885. Anandnath Maharaj hailed from South Konkan and belonged to the Gaud Brahmin sect. He was a discipline of Swami Samarth of Akalkot. His mat or ashram is near Yevla. Nandram Marwadi, Dagdu Gaike, Shama and Tatya visited Yevla once for his darshan. After taking his darshan, they sat in a bullock cart to return to Shirdi. All of a sudden, Anandnath Maharaj came to their bullock cart and sat in it. Then he came to Shirdi. Upon seeing Baba, he said, This Maharaj is a diamond, a rare diamond. You people must have a good perception of his spirituality and divinity. After taking Baba's darshan, he returned to his ashram. Devi Das was already in Shirdi when Baba arrived with the marriage party of Chand Patil. Devi Das was a Gosavi, was bare-bodied except for a langot. Though he was just ten years old, he was highly spiritual and enlightened. Many of the residents of Shirdi, like Tatya and Kashiram, became his disciples. He taught them to write on a slate and also taught them the Venkatesha Stotra. He stayed in the Maruti Mandir and Baba often spent time with him. It was this child yogi who vanquished Javar Ali in the religious debate and drove him out of Shirdi. Janki Das was a saint of the Gosavi Mahanubhavi sect. Baba often went and chatted with him, and at other times Janki Das came and chatted with Baba. Baba was silent for the most of the time and did not waste his time in idle chatter. I shall now narrate the Leela of the Padukas below the Neem tree and its Tapana. Baba's Paduka below the Neem tree. 
In chapter 5 of the Sai Satcharita the story of the Padukas is given Dr Keshav B Gavankar in his book Shiladhi gives a more detailed and slightly different account The devotee should read both the versions together Dr Ram Rao Kotare lived in Mumbai He had made a pilgrimage to Shirdi in 1912 Dr Kothare's medical assistant and his friend by Krishna J Ali Bakkar were also devoted to Baba Unfortunately the name of the medical assistant is not given Ali Bakkar and the medical assistant had visited Shirdi several times earlier They visited Shirdi again in 1912 One evening Shagun Meru Naik Kamlakar Dikshit Ali Bakkar and the medical assistant were chatting together The conversation turned to Baba's manifestation in Shirdi They decided that the area adjacent to Sathewada under the neem tree should be revered as Baba sat there and this site should be marked with the installation of padukas ali bakkar immediately went and got padukas made of a rough ordinary stone and brought them seeing the padukas the medical assistant said do you really want to install these ordinary padukas if my employer was aware of our plan he would gladly have got marble padukas made They informed Dr. Kotare of their plan. He got a drawing of a pair of marble padukas and brought them to Shirdi. The doctor was friendly with Upasani Maharaj and he showed his drawing and told him about the plan. Upasani said, "Your plan is great, but instead of installing bare padukas, if they are motifs of the Shankar chakra gada and padma it will look beautiful the padukas should not lie on the floor they ought to be on a marble pedestal the pedestal should have marble on all four sides on the front panel the sacredness of the neem tree and the greatness of having darshan of the sadguru may be inscribed dr kothare gladly agreed with the suggestion the motives mentioned above are in the four hands of lord vishnu the sound that emits from the shank or conch is the sound of pranav or om it symbolizes nada brahma or god in the form of sound the chakra a wheel symbolizes the one who turns the wheel of samsara gada or mes known as kaumudi stands for a category of buddhi padma or lotus is the symbol of purity and eternal peace on the front panel was inscribed the fourth verse of shri sai nath mahima stotra written by upasani The verse reads I bow to Lord Sainath whose constant abode was at the front of this neem tree thereby he turned into nectar its bitter and distasteful taste because he had exalted this tree above the legendary kalpavriksh or wish fulfilling tree Stapana of the Padukas Dr Kotare got beautiful marble padukas prepared and sent them to Shirdi They were kept in the Khandoba mandir for 2 days Baba said on Shravan Shuddha Purnima perform the stapana On that day at 11 am Govind Kamlakar Dikshit carried the padukas on his head in procession to dwarka mai and placed them at baba's feet baba touched them saying these are the feet of the lord 
keep them below the neem tree a parsi devotee from mumbai named pashat sheth sent a money order of 25 rupees as dakshina to baba baba said keep it as we will need the money tomorrow for the installation of the padukas on the day of the installation upasani jog bhate dada kelkar along with a host of devotees participated in the ceremony they spent 100 rupees for the installation and the feast that followed baba gave 25 rupees and 75 rupees were contributed by ali bakkar vasudev appaji sathe and kamlakar four brahmans representing the four vedas came from kopargaon and performed the ceremony the villagers joyfully participated in the function akalkot maharaj was ali bakkar's chosen deity and he wished to go there baba said are what is there in akalkot why are you going there this information was taken from the book written by kb gavankar the next story in the chapter is the wrestling match with mohuddin tambuli the wrestling match with mohuddin tambuli in the sai satcharita written by shri p b kavde published in 1954 he raised the question whether baba fought such a wrestling match with tambuli actually mohuddin's uncle was a black magician called tantrik who was an expert in jadu tona because of baba his business was affected so they were antagonistic towards baba possibly the match was symbolic as baba would have just lifted his little finger and tamboli would have crumbled to the ground wrestling is symbolic of what we all do on a daily basis it is wrestling with maya which drags us deeper and deeper into the ocean of samsaric or materialistic world it is the constant fight that we struggle with to win over the six internal enemies however it was a milestone in baba's journey on earth after losing the match baba changed his attire and became like a fakir wearing a torn kafni and used a gunny sack as his asan regarding the changing of attire it is the process in the life of a sadhak baba himself was a siddh purush in human form so he was following the sadhana path dress of a fakir is symbolic of sarva sang pratiknya baba said fakiri awal bachai the only possessions that baba had was a tamrail satka kafni and chilam he teaches us that we don't need fine utensils or designer clothes a simple life is favorable to a worry free life we collect and hoard things then we worry lest they crack or break and fear that they will be stolen without giving a single thought to the fact that when we pass away they will be left behind in the dwarka mai baba sat on an old sack to protect himself from the cold floor he implies that we don't need beautiful furniture to be comfortable also the weave of the sack that is the horizontal thread is intertwined with the perpendicular thread this is symbolic of the constant struggle to overcome the maya that we are entwined with baba wore a torn kafni that was patched up in various places the word kafni comes from the word kafan or the shroud that the dead body is wrapped in 
he who dons the kafni is a dead man walking that is though he is breathing and alive he is dead to the attractions and distractions of this world the kafni is symbolic of maya one learns that though we are covered and entangled in maya yet we should be dead to it that is detachment from maya he covered his head with a white cloth that was knotted behind his left ear this headgear or sirvesh denotes sacrifice the langot is a sign of celibacy or brahmacharya baba carried his satka or baton wherever he went this is symbolic of the sanyasi's danda or staff and represents discipline baba also had a tamrail or tin mug like a kamandalu carried by sanyasis and it denotes compassion the traits are necessary for any devotee who wishes to progress spiritually for example if we are immersed in maya the inward journey from the unreal to the real is very difficult thus the lesson here is to have loving detachment the qualities of sacrifice discipline and compassion go together the shastras tell us that we should put away 10% of our earnings as charity and this can be seva to the less fortunate let us try and inculcate it into our lives and finally there is the leela of turning water into oil lighting the lamps with water baba always had his mask lit up with three or four earthen lamps according to the view common to both hindus and muslims that places of worship should be lit at night so he went around begging for oil from the banyas there were only two such shops there and they supplied him with oil gratis one day it struck these people that they should either make baba realize their importance or they should have fun at his expense and they told him mockingly that they had no oil baba had to return to the mosque with his tin empty it was already dusk and the banyas followed him to see what he would do in the darkness baba took some water from the water pot and he shook it vigorously poured it and then drank it then he took some water and filled the four earthen lamps with it and placed each of them a cotton wick and struck it with a match and lit it the spectators thought at first that the cotton soaked in water could not possibly be lit but to their great surprise the lamps were lit and were burning the whole night a little while later they felt terribly guilty and were afraid as baba had showed himself as a man of mystic power and might curse them however baba was the exact opposite he was not a magician resenting contempt and anxious to seize an advantage on the other hand he was the sadguru and had true motherly love for everyone he noted that these men now repented so he gave them some wholesome advice first he asked them you really had oil with you when you said you had none they admitted that they had uttered falsehood then baba told them never to utter falsehood as falsehood displaces the god of truth next he pointed out to them how unsocial and wicked their conduct was the lights were needed for the use of all who visited the mosque and the public would be inconvenienced if there was no light he asked them if they had come to the mosque to enjoy the pain which they expected him to endure while remaining in the darkness they admitted the fact 
Then he pointed out that persons who take delight in others' misery instead of sympathizing with them would be punished by God. God is the mother of all and loves everyone equally. If you hurt a child and tell the mother that you have hurt the child, will the mother be pleased? Thus they had displeased God by coming to rejoice at his supposed miserable plight. He asked them never again to take pleasure in other people's distress. Then they promised to abide by his advice. After having given this excellent advice, Baba dismissed them. The effect of the incident was marvelous, and thus the Yeda Fakir became a mystic with wonderful powers. This information is taken from the life of Sai Baba by Narsan Swamiji.